Cram. Now here's an example of a chest x-ray where there is a pneumothorax. And again, what we're doing is we're looking for that pleural line. Here you can see that pleural line coming down here. And here you can see lung markings all throughout this area here. There is no lung markings. So this is very consistent with a pneumothorax on the left side. Here's another example of pulmonary edema. What you can see here is, if you look very carefully here, you can see that black hole in the middle. That's a endon bronchus, basically consistent with a bronchus with edema in the wall. Now that edema in the wall is from the congestive heart failure. You can see a few other examples over on the other side of the lung here on the right. Here we get that parabronchial cuffing as what it's known as, parabronchial cuffing is consistent with congestive heart failure. You also see, let's go to B. So what's the treatment here? Well, if you have decreased surface area, you're gonna have a problem with gas exchange. And so your oxygen level could actually be low. And so the treatment for that is to give supplemental oxygen. And the rule for that is, is if the PaO2, that's the blood gas oxygen, is less than 55 millimeters of mercury, it's actually been shown that giving supplemental oxygen can actually improve survival. Okay, so here's the first thing that we've talked about under treatments that actually improve survival. It's supplemental oxygen. None of these other things here has been shown to improve survival. Only oxygenation so far. The other thing that you can do is if you take a saturation, an SAO2, and if it's less than 89%, that's also a reason to give supplemental oxygen. We relax these rules a little bit if there are signs of something called pulmonary hypertension, and if we see that we're a little bit more liberal with oxygen in that case instead of 55 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so let's review here. Specifically, these are lung volumes that the one that I want you to remember the most is the functional residual capacity. That is because it is based on the static forces between the chest wall and the lungs. That static force is determined on what shape the lungs are in. Let me explain that a little bit more. Let's say you had scoliosis. In scoliosis, you're not going to be able, the chest wall is not going to be able to expand out very well. And so therefore, its ability to go in this direction is modified, and so you'll have a smaller magnitude in this direction. And as a result, your functional residual capacity will go down. And that's exactly what we see in diseases like scoliosis, like obesity, etc., uh, where you're going to have lower lung volumes. So anyway, the chest wall and the lungs will interact. They will determine your functional residual capacity. So if you look at the previous lectures that we talked about this, we'll see that streptococcal pneumonia is very common. And as a result of that, we're going to use a very specific type of antibiotic in CAP. So strep pneumonia, which represents the major player for typical pneumonia, has to be covered. The other one is mycoplasma pneumonia or pneumoniae. So typically, this is streptococcus is what's seen in the elderly, mycoplasma or chlamydia pneumonia is seen in the younger folk, and, and this is a typical bacteria, and this is an atypical bacteria. So what they have called for is they have called for a third-generation cephalosporin, and in name, that's basically ceftriaxone, okay? otherwise known as rocephin. And that is going to cover your strep pneumonia really, really well. The other thing, however, is you got to cover your atypicals. And for that, we use a macrolide. And the one that they like to use there is azithromycin. Azithromycin. So typically what you'll see is you'll see these patients on ceftrioxone and azithromycin.